I'm Takayuki Sasaki from Yokohama National University. Today, I'd like to talk about exposed infrastructures, discovery, attacks, remediation of the insecure ICS remote management devices. This is joint work with Akira, Carlos, Michel, Katsunari, and Storm. First, I'd like to talk about the background of this research. Remote management devices are used for infrastructures such as water facilities, power plants, and factories. And the remote management devices have uh, analog and digital I.O. Also, it has the mode bus function and communicate with PLC, sensors, and actuators. Also, it has a web UI, and the web UI is exposed to the internet. This is an example of the exposed web UI of the remote management device. You can see the device owner. In this case, it is the local government, also manufacturer name, and also we can see the pump name and the facility name, device status, and the on-off button of the device. So I'd like to define four research questions here. First question is, can we discover exports remote management devices? To answer the question, we conducted device discovery based on web UIs. Second question is, how secure are the devices? To answer this question, we conducted penetration tests. Third question is, are there attacks against the devices? To answer the, device, to answer the question, we conducted honeypot observation. And the last one is, can we remediate the vulnerable devices? To answer the question, we conducted notification campaign. So first topic is device discovery and penetration tests. This slide shows the, our device discovery method. Our method comprises two steps. First step is signature generation step, and second is the scan step. First, we collect web pages in an IP address range, for example, IP address range of a mobile ISP. Then, we perform clustering based on the web UI, because the motor management devices share highly similar web UIs. In contrast, regular websites have a high entropy, so only web UIs of the remote management devices form clusters. Then we select, cluster, we select clusters where there are devices with customized fields, because remote management devices often have a customized field, for example, a facility name. In contrast, general IoT devices do not have customized field. So using this feature, we can separate general IoT devices and the uh, remote management devices. So then, uh, using the unique string, for example, the device model name, we generate device signatures. And at the scan step, we performed, we performed the uh, internet-wide scan using sensors. Finally, we identify an IP address range where many devices exist. This IP address range is used for the next round. This slide shows the example of the clusters. As you can see, uh, the, each device model has the similar web UI and each cluster corresponds to a device model. And next, I'd like to talk about the extraction of facility names. Specifically, we compare the description of the web UI and ex extract differences, which is the customized field, for example, the facility names. And this is the device discovery result. This graph shows the number of the signatures and number of the devices found by the signatures. By repeating the signature generation step and the scan step, finally, we generated 23 signatures and identified 890 exposed devices in Japan. And this table shows the type of infrastructures where the devices were lo located. More than half of the devices are used in the critical infrastructure. 
in addition, we found devices used in the non-critical infrastructure, such as school and uh, home buildings. Then we compare to the, our result with Shodan. Most of the devices provide only web UI, so the devices are not classified as ICS by Shodan. So I would like to show some example of the discovered device. Some devices have the uh, picture, pictures where the device, devices are uh, installed. Also, some devices have a map where the, where the devices were uh, deployed. This is another example. We can see the system architecture of a river monitoring system and we can access this web UI without authentication. So next, I'd like to talk about penetration tests. We selected three devices that are first, third, and sixth devices most frequently found by our scan method. Actually, we bought three devices and conducted manual penetration tests and tool-based penetration tests using uh, tool such as OpenBus. So as a result, 13 zero-day vulnerabilities were identified in all these three device models. And we then notified the vulnerability to Japanese SAT, JP SAT, and got 10 new CVEs. So next topic is honeypot observation. To observe attacks, against the remote management devices. We deployed Honeypot, Honeypots, and uh, that supports HTTP, Telnet, and ICS protocol. As a result, we observed Honeypot visa conducted critical operations. For example, reset of counter value of digital input, and changes of the analog output value, also changes of on-off status, of the digital outputs. This slide shows an attack example. An attacker accessed the configuration page of the device and then changed the device status. And this change would uh, significantly affect the operation of the infrastructure where device, this device is used. Next, to analyze the relationship between the contents of web UI and uh, visitors' behavior, we set up four types of web interfaces. First one is full content with device picture and facility name. Second is the uh, web devices, uh, web interface without facility name. Third one is without facility names and uh, without picture. The last one is simple login form. So the result is rich web UI contents attract visitors. This table shows the average number of commands and average duration of visit. As you can see, the uh, web, as you can see, the web UI contents become rich. The number of the average number of commands and average duration of the visit increase. So it is said that rich content, rich web UI content attract visitors. And there was an interesting event. Our honeypot information was disclosed by a post on a hacker forum. And the many access were all after that post. Actually, the post says that uh, IP address of the, our honeypot. Also, its reply said that the nice leak and open, in, open industry command panel is always good. So I think that uh, hackers are interested in export infrastructures. Next topic is notification campaign. This slide shows the overview of our notification campaign. We contacted the device owner and explained the risks of the exposed devices and mitigations. 
actually made a phone call over the 800 times. After the notification, we perform follow-up scan and measure the effectiveness of the notification. So let's see the detail of the notification step. First one is device discovery. Using our discovery method, we identified 890 devices. Second step is device selection. Due to the uh, limited resources of our notification team, we performed triage of the device. Specifically, we excluded the devices used in small solar power generator. Also, we excluded the devices at latencies, and we selected 352 devices. Next step is phone number identification of the operator. Uh, sorry, next is the uh, next step is operator identification. Based on the uh, description of the web contents, we identified operators of 352 devices. Next step is the phone number identification of the operator. We identified the uh, operator's phone numbers of 317 devices and conducted notifications to persons at the phone numbers. Finally, we reached the persons in charge of the 212 devices and notifications to the persons. As a mitigation, we recommended four items. First one is updating the firmware if the firmware is old or vulnerable. Second one is the removing a facility name or location from the web UI so that the device do not attract attackers. Third one is deploying network access control mechanisms such as firewall and VPN to allow only operators to access the web UI. The last one is changing a password if a password is a default or weak password. This is the operator's response. 90% of the operators did not intend to the, uh, expose their devices to the internet. And by our notification, 85% of the operators were willing to address the security issues. So once operator recognizes the security issues by the notification, most of them were willing to the fix the issues. This is notification result. The uh, blue line in this graph shows the, the number of devices without notification. Green line shows the, the, the number of devices when did not reach the person in charge of the device. Sorry, orange side showed the, uh, the number of devices when we did not reach the person in charge of the device. And green line shows the number of the devices when we reached person in charge of the device. In the last case, 58% of the devices were remediated. So I would like to conclude my presentation. First research question is, can we discover export remote management devices? The answer is yes. We identified 819 export remote management devices in Japan. Second question is, how secure are the devices? The answer is insecure. We identified 13 zero-day vulnerabilities in three device models. And third research question is, the, are there attacks against the devices? The answer is yes. We observed the Honeypot visitor operated the web UI of the Honeypot. We also observed several high-skilled and motivated intruders. The last question is, can we remediate the vulnerable devices? The answer is yes. We conducted a notification campaign, and 58% of the export devices were remediated when we could reach the persons in charge of the devices. And this is a, a good announcement. Thank you for listening.
right, thank you. That was terrifying, but uh, yeah, questions. <laughs> Yeah, uh, hi, Sebastian from CISPA. Um, I, as far as I understood it, you notified the operators of the devices. Yeah. Did you also try to contact the manufacturers of those devices such that they can, well, update the firmware of all the devices such that it is per default not exposed to the internet, for example? Yes, actually. I have contacted three device manufacturers, and uh, especially the uh, manufacturers of the devices, which is the target of the uh, penet penetration tests. And the, they actually did the fixed the issues, vulnerabilities, and new firmware has been released. Yeah, thanks. Any other questions? I had a question. Uh, you reached out to the people running the water treatment plant, and only half of them like responded or patched. Is there like like America has this cybersecurity infrastructure security agency by the government that will still uh, is there like a Japan wide infrastructure security agency that that you are able to reach out to? Because because it seems like you know what forty two percent of devices are still on the internet and haven't patched and have vulnerabilities. Have, have you like asked like some government agency that's like overseeing all infrastructure? Yeah, actually, there is the no dedicated uh, security on organization for uh, infrastructure in Japan, but uh, uh, we co collaborate with the uh, security organization in Japan. Yeah. Can Can you put up the slide that had the the decrease in in vulnerabilities? Yeah, this one. Yeah, so the ones without notification also decreased, correct? I thought could you repeat the the, the the dashed blue line? Yeah. That's people you didn't contact, correct? Right, right. But they also show a decrease in 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 vulnerabilities, is that correct? Yeah, it's correct. Um can do you have an explanation for that? Uh I'm not sure the Exact reason, but uh, it is expected that the uh, some device operator uh, finish the op operating the devices, but uh, not not sure. Okay, thanks. I think we have a couple more minutes. Any more questions? Uh, do you know what the attackers were? trying to do like the motivated attackers like you know turning off water is that just for fun or do they want to do ransomware or like I, I don't think I don't know if you mentioned it's like what was the goal were they planning to do ransomware or something like did they mention that in their forums <laughs> uh, yeah so this is yeah. you know they're able to do a particular attack but like after that how are they trying to make are they trying to make money or they just want chaos like what's the goal of the attacker is it ransomware or something I think that the first uh, reason is the just for fun, <laughs> and the uh, second one is the, the try to uh, destroy the infrastructure. So I, I direct to the uh, investigate the reason at the, the uh, our future work. I think I would have liked it if you had said they were after money over just chaos. <laughs> uh, okay, well, thank you so much. Uh, thanks for a great talk. That was fantastic. Thank you. Let's thank the speaker again.